He's currently the fastest man on two wheels, and after a spectacular last 12 months, he's shot up from 16th to number one in the UCI World Rankings. <laughs> 27-year-old Anse rider Laurent Jalabert has been able to invest in a Harley-Davidson after collecting six major titles last year. The man from Mazamet in southern France had never won any major title until 1995. His form of last year is carried over into the present season with two more stage race victories. The transformation came following probably the lowest point of his professional career. On the first stage of the 1994 Tour de France to Armentier, Jalabert was at the front pushing for the stage victory. He sustained severe facial injuries after the pile-up and was lucky to escape with his life. Jalabert responded to his enforced sabbatical by slogging through the winter months. He's always been blessed with the ability to ride fast, but he added endurance and stamina to his list of capabilities. Perhaps the positive side to that fall was the fact that I was able to recuperate at a time when everybody else was hard at it and making an effort. It was against my will, but it actually worked to my benefit. However, to say that the fall was beneficial to me, that would not be telling the truth. But I did arrive at the start of the 1995 season in extraordinary shape, well in advance of what I could have imagined. So advanced that he startled the field in the first big rendezvous of the season, the Paris-Nice in March. An explosive breakaway on the second stage to Rouen took nearly a minute and a half out of the peloton and laid the foundations for his first major race victory. He then gave France their first success in the one-day Milan to San Remo Classic for six years, out sprinting home favourite Maurizio Fondriest to take an early lead in the World Cup standings. That form continued into April. A towering Fondriest was again on the receiving end as Jalabert took the lead just 30 metres from the line to win in an uphill finish and add the Belgian Flesh Wallon Classic to his tally. <laughs> Following his early season exertions, Jalabert took a month off to spend time with his wife Sylvie and their two daughters and to reflect on his change of fortune. Appreciate. I was lacking a bit of confidence in stage races until I won the Paris-Nice and then I realised that I'd learnt how to attack, that I knew how to climb and that I knew how to beat the clock. Well, this newfound confidence armed him well as he headed for the Grand Bouc. An intermediate sprint bonus on the second stage to Vitre helped him take the yellow jersey. It was exactly a year to the day of his Armentier crash. The Frenchman had realised the dream of many riders to wear the coveted maillot jaune. His reign as race leader lasted just two days, following this pile-up close to the finish of the fourth stage to Le Havre. Although he avoided injury, he was to trail in nearly a minute behind the peloton. Jaja comfortably held his place in the top ten up to the twelfth stage to Monde. Then, on a sizzling hot Bastille Day afternoon, he was to produce one of his greatest ever runs. <laughs> Launching a breakaway 200 kilometres from the finish, Jalabert tore up the field with a performance which will go down in French cycling history. When the Anse star eventually came home to huge cheers, he was nearly six minutes ahead of Miguel Undurain, a performance which moved him to third place in the standings. Jaja finally finished fourth in Paris and collected the points jersey in the process. His display in France indicated that a major Tour victory was within his grasp. When he took the lead on stage three of September's Vuelta a España, he was determined to prove critics like Bernard Eno wrong and that he was capable of winning a major tour. He was still in yellow on the eighth stage to Avila and attacking once more. A breakaway 60 kilometres from home helped him build up a commanding three-minute lead over the main field. 
He maintained that advantage to establish a five-minute overall lead ahead of Abraham Alano and was never seriously threatened from that point onwards. Further wins followed on stages 15 and 17, and in the end, Jalabert's margin of victory gave ample evidence of his transformation from sprinter to major contender. He won by four minutes, scored five stage victories, collected the points jersey and the King of the Mountains title into the bargain. He had truly arrived. In the past, I'd never shown any reason for people to think otherwise. Up until the 95 Tour de France, I wasn't known as a long-distance racer. But I've progressed enormously with my climbing and in the time trials. Now I'm a big player in the major races. The down-to-earth Frenchman's transformation into a big race player may yet help him become France's first Tour de France winner since 1985.